when I was really young, till now, it's the same thing. I walk out of my house, point, 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 stairs, 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 joke, joke, joke. And I guess I'll always be in that position to decide what's the best course of action at the time. <laughs> Actor, but you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, and uh, and it's good and it's bad. You get the good and you get the bad. In the land of Look, I'm not one to complain. I'm an actor, and works work. I know what you think, and I know what you see, but I don't disappear when the camera goes off. People come in with the uh, perception of me. Oh, he's little. Hey, little guy. Hey, little John. Hey, whatever. <laughs> that tastes like a dog's ass. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> Ten minutes later, it's okay. Wait, what's the problem with you? Oh. You're talking. You're conversating. You're hanging out. You're partying. You're this that. Okay, I don't see an issue here. We got a lot of noise down here, man. And uh, every neighbor in town is standing out there. I know where it's coming from. I'm going, God, the guy can shut the garage door. At least. You might as well be in my living room from all the way down to two blocks up I here, man. Shut, I probably should have shut the door, huh? Take yeah. it easy, guy. It's my agent. He's unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's those people who never, ever get rid of that your little part. They can't get over you still being little, no matter what. Like, they'll still, like, a year, two years later, even if you hang out with them every day, still throw up. Hey, man, he'll bite your ankles. He'll kick you in the shins. I mean, you heard it once, you heard it a million times. He can't believe it, folks. He cannot believe it. It's like, what do you, the goal of reminding me that I'm little? I get it, I think. I understand by now. Where you been? I've known Joey, I met him in the hospital when I was 18, so 15, 17 years. John, as a little person drinking a big beer, how do you feel? <laughs> Tell me you know what, Cliff? <laughs> I feel fantastic. Thank it's, you. it's quite it's, invigorating. It's, it's Greg, though. Craig, I feel fantastic. It's invigorating. Now, does that make you feel intimidated in any way? No, because this is way smaller than my penis, Cliff. It's great. Oh, great. Uh, Should I meet you there? Yeah. One, one more stop and then... Yeah. All right, I'll see you there. Well, up? Oh, they're not open until four? What the fuck? I see it when I see it on video. I'm short as shit. I'm I'm really really short, you know. Even in the little people world, so I can understand where the questions might be in your head. I'm Jill. A lot of guys, are like, dude. God, I so want to be you. You're so great. 
looking up those skirts and your face is right in their pussy. And, and I turn around and I go, it's also in everybody's dick. I mean, my face is in the same spot. I mean, wait, what's so great? You're not tall. No, I'm tall. I'm tall. With, with your... I'm 5'9", and my shoes are like... You're 6'1"? Tonight. Only tonight, I'm three six. I don't have heels on that. What size are your shoes? Three. Ah. Oh. Men. The guys are so. Dude, how do you do? I don't get that. How do you do it? What's there to do? You're being yourself. You're having fun. You're flirting. And if it happens, why is it such a fucking miracle? Because I'm little. I mean, that's the miracle. But she's so hot. And. Should I be with someone ugly and two feet tall? Is that supposed to be the way it is? I mean, that's ridiculous. I did grow. I was only 16 inches at birth, so I have grown a whopping 26 inches in my whole lifetime. It's good. We got married when I was 23. He was definitely the first little person I ever met, and that was interesting. So I noticed myself when I met him that I couldn't look him in the eye and then I felt myself looking away, and then so I'd look, you know, and I think that's a phenomenon that a lot of people have, you know, at first, you don't want to stare, you don't want to not stare, so you're kind of like, lost. And then with John, he's got something that, that makes you feel comfortable, and so a lot of little people maybe are nervous, shy away from you because you react like that, but he, he didn't, you know, he just keeps going and pushing you until, until you see him as, you know, himself. Oh my God. Last couple relationships I've had, they were advertised and we didn't really get into it before we got into it. But um, definitely the girls who aren't like all about me already, you know, trying to get to know me and, you know, we're flirting and then the questions definitely come out. Um, how do you do this or how can you do that or whatever? And, and I'm always just going, well, let's figure it out. Let's try it, you know? Yay! He wanted to be a rock star and I couldn't not allow him to be a rock star. So I let him. And then in my letting him and giving him opportunities and, and whatever, and not knowing exactly what was happening, but you know, knowing that stuff was not kosher. I was just partying and whatever, and, uh, and I met a girl, which ended up being my second wife. Got her pregnant, and uh, so Bobby and I obviously had to freak up and whatnot. But no matter how it worked out, I wouldn't have Audrey. Now, I don't know if that's a, a God's thing, and I don't know if I can be without Audrey. So no matter how it works out, who hates me, who loves me, I still got my baby. She's in private school, so there's a turnover of kids. And these new kids never seen me before, and they started saying stuff, and I had to stop them. And, of course not reprimand him, just explain to him, I know I'm little, <laughs> she knows I'm little, it doesn't have to be said. <laughs> Some people, no names mentioned, think that this is way too much for her. Um, or they're worried about it being way too much for her. Rather than giving her credit for being pretty smart, pretty bright, intelligent, about it. That's it? What about your suitcase? I mean, your little lunchbox. And for me, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't grow. So we gotta deal with what we gotta deal with. Yeah, thank you for being a big girl. About 80% of achondroplastic people are the first in their family to have the condition. So it's what we call a new mutation. Left knee minus 35. We classify little people into those that are proportionate, that is, uh, their body proportions are normal, 
versus those that are disproportionate, that is their limbs are short in comparison to their trunk or their trunk is short in comparison to the limbs. The proportion of dwarfs can be due to a variety of things, primarily growth hormone deficiency. The disproportionate forms of short stature are usually due to skeletal dysplasias and there are well over 250 different forms of those. The one I have is called spondyla epimetaphyseal dysplasia, meaning I have a bone deformity caused by a genetic mutation, which puts me on the left of Shaq and that's mini-me on the right. But even as rare as dwarfism is, it can happen to anyone. Put it on my head. Good one. That was a good one. Here's uh, one of his surgeries. <laughs> hey, let me see. Let me Look see. Look at his bed head. <laughs> Look at his bed hair. He was a wild guy. Most little people, like my uh, my uh, surgeries, were based on because um, believe it or not, even though I'm this short, we actually are still growing. So it's kind of like just stabilizing you until you finish growing at 18, 19, whatever that age is. So my first surgery was at four. I never thought anything of it. We never talked about it. It was just kind of like it was a normal thing when we took him for surgeries and it was just never talked about that he was any different. My next surgery was at nine years old. I had body cast up to here for my chest to my feet. Couldn't sit up, I mean, nothing. I mean, I was in a body cast. This is the one where they took the staples out, this surgery. Oh. We weren't looking too good here. Yeah. He survived, you know. We brought him home in a body cast for six months. I'm sure that, you know, within him, he has gone through a lot of pain. But he never wants to talk about that. He never talked about that. Let's see, what else do I have okay. here? What, what was this one about? I can't see it. It was Barbie's prom. Yeah, I went to prom too, I don't know. Hey, you like the church of Chandra? <laughs> I went to prom somewhere, yeah. something. So. I remember one time he came home from school and said uh, they had had their running practice. He was playing baseball and they would go around the field running. And then he said to me, I did so well today, Mom, so well. I was almost, almost the last one in the line. So, you know, he was always left behind, all the kids were running in front of him. But it didn't matter to him. He was, he was almost there with the last guy, and that was such an accomplishment for him, you know, to be able to, part, to be part of the team. And, uh, and how, try, how hard he tried, he always tried. And, and it just didn't matter that he was smaller or different, or, you know, he, he was going to go out and pursue whatever wanted to do. As you can see, I'm a little person. That's acceptable terminology. You could say that doesn't really bother me. Medically speaking, you could say dwarf. That doesn't bother me either. The word midget is a derogatory term. We don't like to be called that. It's not very nice. Please don't say that. We'd much rather be known as colored wetbacks or gooks. <laughs> Any one of those is fine. And I think visually, if we have to be honest, there's a people in even middle America that are a little bit uncomfortable with the visual of a dwarf who looks distorted to them. How you doing? How are you? Good. Never actually seen one of us this close before, have you? There was this girl who was absolutely terrified of me. <laughs> I've never had that. I mean, I've run into that in my Mm -mm, two years on the planet. Mm -mm, two years on the planet, but um, I've never run into it in a performance setting where somebody's just, oh, don't come near me, don't come near me, you know? And all I could do was go near her because she was so terrified. I wanted to try to get her to laugh and get her to be at ease, and she kind of did a little bit here and there, but she still, at the end of the day, she was so scared. Shake, shake. It's like I'm at the freaking zoo. Just, there you go. Now you have to give me a cracker. That's how it works. I did the trick, give me the cracker. I don't think it's about size. You know, little people, people with dwarfism are freaky. <laughs> They're freaky in people's eyes because one in 10,000 of us is a person with a dwarfism and therefore we're not all that common. 
And so what people don't see on a regular basis, they start to develop fears of when they do see them. I'm a little person and I have seen less than five outside of the business. Not someone I recognized from, my, from the business or I wasn't at an audition, I wasn't at a Hollywood function. I was at a grocery store. I saw one at a grocery store, lost my mind. Like, hi, can I, talk? I wanted to talk to you. They're like, what do you want? And you know, wow, what do you, you know, you also, you're not in the business, you're not in Hollywood, and you live in Burbank, and you know, and it's so funny because there's like hundreds and hundreds of little people, primarily in LA, in the Valley, in Hollywood. And you only see them at auditions, and I don't know where they hide, do they hide? Ready to embark on a crazy ass journey right now. I am doing a play in New York, the Radio City Christmas Spectacular with the Rockettes, Kick and Chicks. Ah! The show runs concurrently in like seven different cities. Oh, sorry. I did the show in, the, in Detroit for like five years. And, you know, it's decent, it's okay money and stuff, but nothing like this. This is, like, insane. And it's like I said to myself, I'm not going to do it unless I get in New York. What's up, brother? What's up, man? How you guys doing? It's my daily trip. It's my exercise before I got exercise. We have these underclothes we got to wear. It's a, <laughs> it's a Liberace elf gayness thing. How about them shoes, huh? And then the old jackets. This couldn't be more flamboyant, you know what I mean? I guess it's, I think it's pretty subtle. They got all cool clothes. I get these geek ass <laughs> clothes. My name is Mr. Spruce, and I'm Santa's right hand man. That's 6,000 people watching you do live. This is not tracked. You gotta, you know, you're doing your dialogue. In, you know, in, it's gonna end up being in front of a million people by the end of the run. 6,000 people times 200 shows, so that's impressive to me. Monday through Thursday, it's four shows. Friday's five shows. Saturday's six shows. Sunday's five shows. It's fine, like, I knew going out there that it's all elf full crap. The first year, this year it's been dead, but my first year during the elf season, um, it was insane. You're doing like eight auditions a week for elves, crap. You know, there's a lot of little people out in this town who come out here to be actors, but they don't, they don't study it. They don't, you know, they just think I'm short. I'm gonna get a job, and a lot of times they will. They'll get a lot of this, you know, extra stuff. The bar, I guess, is set so low, no pun intended, that when a little person goes in and can act, it's actually shocking, because what they're really looking for is just the physical body. And when you can act, it's a bonus. I'm not putting nobody down, and I'm not putting any little person down, but a lot of little people are lazy, and they just want things handed to them. I've seen it because I've worked on sets with them, and they just want to act funny and dance around with a silly hat. And it's like, it's gonna take a little bit more than that, you know what I mean? It's a thing they got, they call dues, and everybody have to pay them, and it takes a while. You know, I didn't like it when I came out here. I thought that, you know, if you're good enough, you should be able to go in there and get the job, but it's, it's not like that. I, unfortunately, and fortunately, get more specified kinds of roles that might only be for a little person, whereas another character actor will have a, more of a broad scope of what they can play. And so it's my goal to be like the other character actor that can cover the, you know, cover the gambit as far as what they can portray. When I first got here, I was just like, this is never gonna end, this is never gonna end. <laughs> and I can't believe it's actually here. Uh, but I go home for only like a week and then I fly to Hong Kong. Yeah, so I just got home from New York, had Christmas with my daughter. This is packed, I'm ready to go to Hong Kong. This is it, I'm sleeping on my bed with my suitcases just to leave. But, when I get back, Flat screen on that wall, new bed, dresser, the whole nine yards, so I'm gonna be stoked. Got his job with the Cirque Show, so I'm gonna be doing a comedy relief. 
So here's my dad taking me to the airport. Say hi, Dad. Hi. <laughs> so cool. On the way. Bye. See, everybody drives backwards here, by the way. Americanized. It's 12.30 now, we have an hour. Everybody's gonna get some food and put our makeup on. That's my girlfriend. Is that baby? Is that tall enough for you? Oh, unbelievable, huh? Good morning, America. Hi. It's Friday. I don't know what date. Is it March 10th? March 10th. It's the 9th where you are. Hi. We're getting ready to go out tonight. We're getting ready to go out tonight. Just got done with another show today. This is my people's. We're gonna take a cab home. Yes. Put these shoes off. Yeah, it's good, honey. We're going out right now. It's gonna be a good time. I have to stay up to go to bed. Like, to try and knock myself out and get myself back on time schedule. So I just started drinking and it just turned into a oblivious fucking nightmare. <laughs> came back from Hong Kong, China. My mom found me. Took me to detox and here I am. But I'm all good now. I mean, I could, I, I did damage, don't get me wrong, but. What damage? Like, liver damage and shit. No cameras today. No? No, not today, sorry. Oh man. What's up, what happened? Just all kind of stuff. But it's all come down. I mean, that's why I'm out, you know, because it, it all came back down. And, Hello. You know what I'm saying? Like, everything came back to normal. They wouldn't have let me gone if it didn't come back to normal. So that's the only the grateful thing. But I can't, I can't do it again. I'll be fucked. I have been to detox before. One other time. Last time, it wasn't as bad. Uh... My wife left me and I freaked out and I just jumped inside a bottle. That's it. I mean, it, like, it's a different kind of drink. There's partying, you know, we all do. Woo! Oh, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. yummy! <laughs> Woo! Watch this. Bucks Boom! <laughs> Boom! Bring it up, bring it up. And then there was just like just stupid sitting there in your room, just going, you know, until you don't know who the fuck you are. So, I'm a fun drunk, but then I'm also one of those fucking closet fucking guys. I'm coming out of the closet. Or as, as all these midgets would make a joke, I'm coming out of the cupboard. Ooh. Get it, because I'm little. What? I can't find a ducky. I'm getting to the age, to the point of it's time to stop messing around and uh, take care of myself so I can take care of my daughter. I can't wait for the train. Um, I'm getting to see her a little more often. Just spent the night with her and the day with her before the day before. What are you doing? If she smiles and she's happy and she calls me daddy, nothing else will break me. But I need to keep that in mind at all times. Not just when I'm with her, but when I'm not. The good that's around you When reality is gone along I feel 100% better as far as uh, 
you know, getting up in the morning and not needing or worrying about where we're gonna go and do and and um, and also actually in the opposite of that, actually getting up and going and doing stuff and it's okay. I'm not going I'm not blowing it off just so I can sit there and get all fucked up. Today is April 19th and we're going to a photo shoot audition. So they want us to dress up like leprechauns, which is odd, right, for little people. But who else is gonna do it, right? Are you gonna do it? To me, I'm a tough guy. It does really bother me. Uh, a lot of our, our members are, are pretty sensitive. Uh, as far as they don't, they really want to try to get some serious roles. But to me, as far as doing a leprechaun on Jay Leno, getting a nice laugh out of it, that, I'm very happy with that. They probably had to run around like a pizza. Or... No, no, it's, um, <laughs> they're doing a fudge thing. So you'd be a little fudge, leaving skid marks all over. <laughs> I find there's a lot of comedy in being four feet tall. It's okay to laugh at it at times, as long as there's something else besides just a gag. And that's where you run into in Hollywood, is that so often it's just the gag. It's... This doesn't look good. You cook the dinner tonight. I am not cooking. Right. 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 Just break it up, all right? We've got no problem. We've got hey. no problem. I, I just need you to go over there, please. Just stand over there, sir, while I talk to the lady, all right? Stay there. Oh! Oh! Hey, give me that. You give me that. You give me that right now, I'll kick you all the way back to Santa's workshop, you I just think it's hilarious. I've never gotten in a fight with anybody, especially anybody bigger than me. I mean, to the amount of times you see a little person fighting, it's, it's as if we just kick everybody's ass all over the country. Help me up here. Oh! oh God, crazy dwarf! Oh, oh. You know, Hollywood's been guilty of this in the past, of perpetuating stereotypes that don't have a whole lot of truth behind them. I think it's just we're such a minority, you know, we're not like uh, blacks or overweight people or whatever that have huge numbers behind them. We're such a small minority that I think we're one of the last ones that can still kind of get kicked around a little bit. There's a whole thing of like little people are dogs. Like we bite, we hump legs, we get patted on the head. I mean all of these, you know, and the patting on the head is something that happens fairly frequently as an adult man. I mean, I don't know how many times you have been patted on the head walking around the world, but you know, people like to pat little people on the head as if we're some sort of pet. The Department of Internal Affairs is sending a disciplinary auditor. He'll be looking for incidents of racism, sexual harassment, insensitivity to the differently abled. Please obey the Sheriff's Department code of conduct. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Who did, did you do that? Did you do that? <laughs> Suspended! 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 Look, I've done my fair share for the paycheck, too. Can't deny that. That's just part of the business. But I know I have more to offer. Can I ask you a question? Sure. You were hitting on me, right? Are you kidding? You're an A1 piece of tail, honey. He doesn't rat. need to be a little kid. It's the cop that thinks he's a little yeah, kid. Yeah, he's rat, right? Okay. I got a little taste of success, and when you feel that, and just being on a set, seeing the process, how it works, and then having the fun of, of doing it, it's just so enthralling, and you want to get into the next project. You want to do another thing. Action! Hey there, little buddy. Your parents home? What the fuck do you think? Cops are gone, party is on! Woo! I just saw you on King and Queen's Day. Ah, you did? It was yeah. on the other day, right? Yeah. Loving you. I mean, it's fun to get recognized because, I mean, I'm not an A-list actor, but the fact that people see me on the streets every day, at least the, that's the point right now, every single day I get recognized by somebody. Are you just girls gone wild? Yes. Thank you very much. Our hat. Give me a kiss. Bye, baby. Wait, I haven't seen boobies yet, though. I know! Boobies! Ah! 
Hell yeah. I've tried a nine to five. It sucked. You can't leave. You can't go anywhere. I'm like, oh, I've been working for two hours. Let me go to McDonald's. No, doesn't work. You're fired, I guess. I don't know, though. I don't know how that works. Tonight we are dwarf boxing. Dwarf tossing. And dwarf bowling. Little people, they get offended by what I do. You know, I'm a little person, and they get all, you know, up in a roar because they think I'm, I'm degrading them. I get $500 an hour. I'll degrade anybody I want for $500 an hour. We're not here to hurt my friend, all right? You hurt my friend, we're gonna have some fucking problems. I've heard a lot of people, you know, have been upset about it. Don't get me wrong, I was to that point that I questioned this business. But when you start realizing if it's under control, and you have rules, and if you're not put in, into any harm, you shouldn't have a problem. Es lo que más le gusta a la gente. Ver a sus artistas favoritos en miniatura, en pequeño. Eso es lo que le más le gusta a la gente. Más que nada el peligro con Toria con becerros más chicos que son más rápidos. Después de un capazo dan vuelta más rápido. Tenemos más dificultad para movernos que un toro grande porque porque los toros más grandes cuando Toria da un capazo y, y, y dura más en darle una vuelta. Los becerros duran es más rápido es más peligroso. question me and what's kind of a normal family concern for me it's a tradition uh, not nothing about a site uh, everything about he's been married before he's got a kid and um, I'm 23 almost 24 and Jessica what the hell are you doing Touch. get off how about what's that black one how many was that 250 how much 250. 250 her brother came around I actually had a meeting with him if you will <laughs> Hey, uh, we have to talk kind of thing. I'm like, all right. And nothing to do with me being little. It had to do with just all age. <laughs> it's fucking, it was cool. We're gonna take this one. I'm very, actually, I'm very happy. I'm kind of like, giddy. It's all little like me. <laughs> you know, it takes a strong person, taller, a woman or a man, it takes a strong person to accept the fact that you're little, I don't give a shit, I still like you, and I'm attracted to you, and everything works out. And then, like, I'm talking intimately, it's still normal. It might feel different, everybody feels different, whatever, but um, it's a matter of people can get over it or not. I'm gonna audition for a national visa commercial. I gotta be a leprechaun, I gotta be green. Do you have a stapler? Uh, you know, I, I don't prefer it, but I do it because, you know, my daughter's in private school and I got food and insurance, health insurance, and it's totally financial. Oh, right, my gold. Until there are better scripts, until we get that script, then it's gonna be like that because people gotta eat and they have to eat, you know? Some people, I mean, this is what they do to survive. You know, it's like the difference between rice and beans and steak. You know, if you don't get it, you go home, you eat rice and beans. If you get it, well, you got steak with the rice. 22s, 22s, Diablo. It's that whole chain of command. We have to answer to the casting directors, then they have to answer to somebody else. And so the power isn't really there. It's, it's the power is going to be when a writer is also an executive producer that comes up with a really cool idea and gives somebody like John a chance. We're just not that large of a, of a, of a visual 
American uh, majority for them to keep writing things for little people. They but, do it when they do it. And that's a good point. But the other side to that is we're never going to become that if all we're seen as are the elves and the leprechauns and the mystical creatures. If we were seen right. as a random uh, cashier or neighbor, then we would become, um, there would be an awareness publicly that we can be other things other than that. Right. And I'm going to read with you, so I'll give you the lead in line. Yeah, there's, there's one line, right? I mean, yeah. Okay. But I'll give you Earl's little voiceover before that. Well, we got along with Maggie's neighbors so well that we even stayed for dinner. And I'll go on record as saying nobody barbecues a pig like carnival folk. Never get into a contest with the carnival freak. Any contest. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. That's Very nice. Great. nice. Yeah, nice. great job. Thank you. You know they laugh. You don't know if they're laughing at you or with you. <laughs> I was at a bar with a friend talking about the roles that I play. If I play a leprechaun or an elf. He told me one day, he says, you know what? You're being paid to play that character. You're an actor. The producers are giving you money to portray that elf, that leprechaun, mm -hmm. that Oompa Loompa. You're a good actor, portray that character. There's definitely a role to be played for little people, but there's also a need to show little people as every other walk of life. I want to be a, a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher or a parent, because I am a parent. We are doctors and lawyers. Looking for something? Oh, right, my gold. Here it is. Huh? Unbelievable, huh? That's like Academy Award winning right there. You know, little people are actually the most employed disability group in Hollywood. And so it's a funny thing to sort of say that we, you know, have a ton of diff, because we're sort of like, you know, on the, on the arc of where you're most screwed. We're not totally screwed, but you do definitely run into some serious problems. John. Yes. All right. Wish me luck, kids. Luckily, I've been around long enough that there's enough people that know me that will take a chance on me and see me for another role. And so from my end, and with their help, hopefully I get to manipulate some of the perceptions of little people in Hollywood, as any other little person actor would if they had that same opportunity. Did he just jump over my head? Oh, right, my gold. Oh, it's right here. I got tired of people taking it all the time, so I got a check card. And if you steal it, I am not liable for all the unauthorized charges. Very nice. Let's do one more take. You got it. Uh, this time, let's go uh, a little bigger with it. A little more animated, like Lucky Charms type. Uh, oh, okay. Just so we have another take on it. You got it, you got and it. You can literally kind of dance around in a circle. Well, that's the thing. If you're going to go in as and portray the leprechaun, they don't want, you know, De Niro as a leprechaun. Talking to me? You know, they don't want, <laughs> you know, they don't want that leprechaun. They don't want, you know, Chris Walken as a leprechaun. Hey, you know, Look, there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, and it's for you, it's for me, we'll share, you know. They don't want that. They want Lucky Charms, Leprechaun. You've heard of the big story. Well, here's the little story. The first convention of the midgets of America. Fittingly enough, in Reno, which builds itself as the biggest little city in the world. And there's nothing small time about the reception they give the little people or about the organization itself, which is now campaigning for half fare on trains and airlines for midgets. Other big problems for little people include half-size adult clothing and getting properly sized furniture, especially tables. But the little people of America are going for high stakes now that they're organized. They've got what it takes to climb to their goal. In these regional conferences and in these national conferences, we specifically find places like this hotel to accommodate us. It's the only place a little person can feel, quote unquote, normal. They smell terrific. And you still don't want to make out, right? What's your name? John. John, you always ask girls to make up before you ask them their name? Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean? It's not the usual protocol. <laughs> what is the protocol? What's your name? And I say, can we make out? I think it's, that's a little more respectful. What is your name? I'm Vina. I'm John. Mm -hmm. 
John, you sweet thing. <laughs> These conventions provide a lot of people who have problems during the regular course of the year to feel comfortable, normal, sexy, handsome, whatever, and be attracted to someone else and be able to <laughs> get their group on. Hey, what's up, dog? Good, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. Well, certainly everybody comes to these conventions with their own agenda. If you were to ask what's the most important aspect of my eight-year-old, he would say hanging out with his friends at the pool. If you would talk to my 13-year-old, he'd say hanging out with his friends on the dance floor. For me, it's the family reunion, getting together with friends that I've known over the years. And it's also, I get a great satisfaction out of matching families with appropriate doctors that can give them good direction. I got out. I got pinched. Too easy. <laughs> For me, I mean, there's so much, there's so many workshops to like find out about your type of dwarfism and all that, but I think it's awesome for the kids. It's like confidence for them, you know, like, you know, they get to meet other people. You know, some kids might be shy, you know. I mean, I know it helped me growing up just like realize that, you know, I'm not the only one out there, you know. Well, I think when you have conditions that are as rare as what we have and you live your life in a world where people are, everybody else is the same and you're different. Um, I think it's nice to come to a place where people, there are people you can relate to, at least on this, on this particular part of your life. I learned how to tie when I was really small. They're not part of the convention at all. <laughs> Are you part of that party over there? Yeah. I'm part of this party. Yeah, the one upstairs. <laughs> yeah, the one upstairs. 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 Every single fucking convention, I'm the guy that always gets pinched. I don't solicit the shit. It just fucking follows me. I gotta say the good with the bad with that, you know. One minute, I mean, one person, I'm the coolest fucking guy in the world. Next person, is, I'm the weirdest guy in the world. And it's every day. It's pointing and staring and this and that. And, you know, one minute I'm cool. Next minute I'm a dick. By the way, I'm a... You know, I do that myself. Because you forget that he's little, you forget that it, it, it does impact him. I, I often wondered if he was tall, if he would just be a complete and total prick, or if he would, you know, still be him. Because 
you know, he's a cocky bastard anyway, right? I mean, can you imagine? And that's that's always been the thought. Can you imagine if he was tall, like he would just be a, a cockier bastard that, you know, no one could stand. But I mean, because he's little, he kind of has this balance of, of funny. I mean, he has, he, he, he does that to protect himself, I guess, I don't really know, but just this balance of funny and cocky and, I don't know if it's because he's little. I don't know. <laughs> I was born and uh... My mom isn't going to see me for like, I don't know, eight hours later or some shit. And my doctor goes in to, my, to see my mom and my dad and says, Oh, yeah, looks like you have a circus dwarf here. That was straight out of his mouth. He delivered me in cowboy boots, Tucson, Arizona. And my mom was like, what? She barely speaks English at this point. She was 22, just came to America at 19. She says, what does that mean? Well, he's got really small arms, really small legs. And she was thinking I was like, you know, a flipper, you know, that kind of shit. And um, they bring me into her room and uh, she started crying. And I'm crying now. Oh, because she's like, I'm in broken English, she's like, What's wrong with them? I'm not, I don't get it. She didn't know what dwarfism was, you know, little people. It's her first child. Her first child, um, she had a miscarriage. And then her first child is uh, a little person. Yeah, I remember I, they kept me at the hospital for two or three days, and I remember they um, sent me to take a bath in this place. They didn't have a bathtub. Uh, and I remember just crying unconsolably, you know. Uh, it was very sad. It was just sad. I would probably say it was the most difficult day of my life. And I was very young. It was, it was the shock of the abnormality. It was a selfish thing, I mean, obviously. At that time, it was something that I didn't know how to deal with. And, uh, you know, later on in life, as, as things developed, I developed a concern for him and what he has to go through because it's, it's not an easy life, you know. I'm not going. I'm not going. Bitch. There's me and Jess in Hong Kong. And what I really love more than anything about this picture is that Jess is five foot ten, I'm three six. It's not even an issue to come down and be with me. And she loves me like that. I love that more than life itself. Which is what makes life what it is. It's what it is. So. She broke up with me. She's scared. She thinks she's disposable to me whatever reason, but um, since then we've hopefully, I hope, reconciled. I love her to death. Um, I want to be with her. I was just laying down on my bed watching TV. 
And then I was flopping around like a fish. Bit my tongue, bleeding. Paramedics show up, fire trucks, ambulance, the whole nine yards. They cart me off to the hospital and I'm in the emergency room and I had another one. Hopefully he's back in control, he's kind of out of control and you know, we just want him to live and hopefully he'll change his ways and maybe go to rehab for six months, six or ten months, maybe a year. You know, that's probably what he needs. He just does not stay with it. It's like he thinks he can do it on his own and he can't. If he stays on the right track, he could go far. He could go far. He really could. That's if he stays sober. I can tell you one thing, I mean, I recoup. Amazing. I mean, I was like, after the seizures, I was paralyzed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was weird. Mm -hmm. Couldn't move my legs. I mean, it was mind boggling. Sure. And you were at hope for detoxification as well? Yeah. And the, that was a long time. Okay. But then. Um, and the alcohol has been for how long? What do you mean? Drinking. You, you've detoxed for alcohol twice, so. Yeah. You've been drinking for how long? Well, how long? Yeah. Um, <laughs> problematic um, regular, drinking. Oh, problematic drinking? Oh, I would say a year and a half or two, whatever it is. Problematic. But I'd stop in between, you know, once in a while, you know, of course when I detox, and then I'd have like, I wouldn't drink for like five months or something like that, and then then I got back on, and that went for a while, and then I didn't drink for like four months again or something. So you're, binge, you're drinking in a kind of a binge pattern? Yeah, kind of like the excuse of a woman pattern kind of thing or something like that, but that was probably the only excuse of me, but yeah. I'm John, I'm an alcoholic. John. This past week has been a great reminder of why I should redo step four. Um, because uh, a lot of things happened the last couple of weeks that is going to make it well worth it. So thanks for letting me share. There's a predisposition in my family's life to already be a raging alcoholic, so I have that gene, I'm sure. But no, it was just, um, starts off as fun, as fun, and then it turns into too much. Other than that, it's, it's nothing to do with me. Oh, hell no. I have no, no qualms about being little. No depression about being little, you know. All my things that I have a problem with are just regular things, you know. Um, regular, regular things. Nothing to deal with being little. So. Are you still dating transvestites? No, I stopped dating your girlfriend a while ago, though. She's good. She's good. Hi there. Thumb drop here. I just wanted to be clear about something. We're cobblers. We make rocking horses and jack-in-the-boxes. iPods? Not so much. We have to outsource those. You can get them at Radio Shack with many different things. I'm gonna be evening, speakers, what do I do? Cases, Call it a good time, time, smoking in a room. I'm telling myself that I got to stay true. Yeah. I want people to view me as John, and usually it always is. There's never going to be a perfect world, so as long as you don't make fun of me and we can just talk one, one on one, eye to eye, we will eventually, no matter who you are, you will eventually see me as only John. If you feel like you're alone in the crowd, stay true till the river washes you. Following something, feeling like I should. River is bucking, but I'm sitting good. I can honestly say that I did what I could. Yeah. There's so many different elements of people. 
unbelievable. I really enjoy it. I mean, if I wasn't little, I wouldn't see everybody's personality. But no, with me, they spark up conversation, or they'll say something stupid. <laughs> you never know. It's like, around the corner, here we go, what's gonna happen? You know? because it's I'm and then the small horse. But no one's bigger than anybody. I don't care who you are. That's Tom, by the way. That guy's the shit right there, bro. He's visited every Hooters in every city in the world. No bullshit. I swear to God, this is claim to fame. Anyway, there's no one bigger than anybody. Why would I need to sit in a bigger seat than this? So I don't need to buy myself a first class ticket and people see me at the airport and then I'm sitting like economy class with them too, if I buy the ticket. And it's like boom and I'm sitting like this in an economy class putting my feet up. They're like, what? hey, wait man, weren't you sitting first class, dude? And I, and I was like, go, dude, I ain't care for me, first class, dude. I'll save the bucks deluxe, bro. You got to get that. You give me fever and a cold sweat. The way I like it is the way it is. I always ask him, like, so am I the smallest guy you've ever been with? Like, not height, but this? He's like, no. And so I always freak out. Like, a six foot grown man's got a smaller dick than me. You know, and mine ain't big. I mean, it's normal, but it's like, and I was like, that would suck to be them. Go ahead, take them on to the bridge. Role play, I'll be a leprechaun. Take him to the bridge. And you'll be you'll you'll be a giant no, you'll be a pot of gold. Stay on the scene. Yeah. Like a sex machine. Yes. Well, I just want to leave you guys one little note before I go. People say size doesn't matter. But I'm here to tell you that it does. Very important to people. Size matters. Luckily, I had a red hats. Talking about right here, folks. Right here. I can touch my penis to my head. Right here. Thanks very much. Get around to the show.